This is Brad A. Milford with the Unlimited Business Wisdom Podcast, where business owners, yep, share their wisdom. It's short to the point because we respect people's time and because we know transforming possibility happens fast and it leads to lasting results. So let's get to it. Question number one in a few sentences, Marisa, tell me what you're doing and who you are. Well, thanks so much, first of all, Brad, for having me on this podcast. I'm really, really happy to have met you and humbled by the opportunity and blessed to be here. Um, I am Marisa Brown. Uh, So uh, fast forward to the journey of becoming an entrepreneur. I actually started my business just about, we're closing in on a year and a half now and a year and a half ago. (laughs) And I am a true entrepreneur. I do own and run my own business. Um, I'm not a solopreneur anymore. I did start out as a solopreneur and now have a small team. Um, I'm a my micro team, five people or less right now. I have five people on the team um, total. And, um, it's been great. Uh, I, what I do, um, I essentially run on one side, I do virtual and hybrid events for clients. So I create events that really help showcase and, sh- and highlight what it is that they're trying to, whether it be themselves, a product or a service that they offer. So I do that. And I also, I do that for profit and not for profit. And then I also do promotions for startup and VIP clients. And a lot of times the promotional element that I bring by having those two faucets of my company, almost agency-esque, it's the goal, um, is that I utilize a lot of events to strategically highlight where it is that they can really offer better things for their startup or VIP. So. Love it. I love it. Did, did everybody hear that? Events and events, <laughs> more events. That's right. Well, but the thing about it is events are the reason why I got into events in the promotional space is because I did a lot of promotions and sales before that. And I came into a lot of these trade shows. And so I thought, well, you know what? Events really do a great job of highlighting what it is that people need to showcase, right? They sell something to people without selling, right? So. Love it. Thank you so much. Question number two, what's the best thing about being in business? (laughs) The best thing about being in business. Oh my gosh. There are so many wonderful things about being in business. And there are so many things where you're like, that's not the best thing about being in business, but (laughs) right. I mean, let's just be honest. Like that's one of the things that I show, that I show as part of my personal branding, even through my company is vulnerability and behind the veil, lifting the veil so that other people can see what actually happened. So best thing about being in business for myself is that I get to run it. I, that sounds like a cliche. A lot of people think they want to run something and they don't. I've just always been a very, um, if anybody knows anything about Enneagrams, this would help, will appeal on the podcast. Anybody that knows that I am an eight wing seven, I'm a maverick. So through and through uh, mavericks are one of the smallest portion of the Enneagram. And they're also uh, quite often leaders or entrepreneurs because we kind of do our own thing. <laughs> we like to not be strapped down and we like to be in charge because we just have different ideas and visions of, and versions of things that we want to do that other people don't. So I found myself often in leadership positions, but I always found myself kind of going, this is not the way that I would do this. This is not really my idea of how this would go. There's a more efficient way to get this done, or there's a better way to get this done. And so I ended up just being like, I, I, okay, after trials and tribulations, lots of things, uh, I was a wild and fighter firefighter for the last six years. Um, realized I could pretty much do anything if I really wanted to, because I was scared before that started my own business. So that's the best thing about being in business business is uh, flexibility and freedom. So I absolutely love your answer. You started out by saying I'm a true entrepreneur. And then in this question, in your answer of the question, Mm -hmm. you actually spoke into what a real entrepreneur is. Just finding that opportunity and being who you are. And if there's any one thing you figure out as being an entrepreneur, it's who you are (laughs) as a person. I love how you tied that into Enneagram as well. So (laughs) love your answer. Thank you. Question number three. We hear from other business owners, they're getting so much business. Honestly, they are. Now, right now, today, (laughs) the chaos is causing overwhelm sometimes. Tell me your thoughts on that, Marisa. Two two things. One, if people think that they're not getting business during even this uh, turbulent time period, this pandemic, you're wrong. There's lots of business to still be had. People, um, they're just more picky about what they want to do. Uh, so they, you know, they really are working with people that they like and that they, they, they can trust. So there's that no like and trust factor, number one. And number two, where you're saying people are overwhelmed. Absolutely true. That's another truth between mental health being a huge concern, right? With everything going on and also being, getting a lot of business oftentimes 
people like myself that were solopreneurs are finding themselves stretched thin. And instead of reevaluating where they may or may not need somebody to come and help and, and evaluate their, what they're doing and say, hey, look, I think that you could utilize these services or outsource certain things so that you can be more successful. Oftentimes, some solopreneurs really just need to outsource things in their personal life so that they can run their business more efficiently or and or they need to start thinking about creating a small team, not stretching themselves too thin where they're hiring everything and everybody out because that's not something you should do. It has to be effective and you need to be only outsourcing the things that don't require you to be the grandmaster, the leader, right? Stop. Uh, this is something I want to tell women and I'm going to tell all entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, stop outsourcing like your invoicing and your emails and things like that because you can outsource other things like graphic design, web development that really, really require your true energy, right? If somebody screws up an invoice for you, that can be a costly mistake. But if somebody screws up a graphic or a logo, not necessarily as big of a mistake or like your laundry, right? If you're just doing your personal stuff, if somebody screws up your the cleaning your home, right? If you get a house cleaner or something, that is not as costly of a mistake as it is like screwing up $5,000, $10,000, right? So there's things that you just have to weigh what is worth it. So I think honestly, when you can come to the point where you realize that you can't do everything, you eliminate some of that overwhelm. I've been doing it myself and it helps immensely. Love it. Love it. Couldn't love it more. <laughs> um, what I really Thanks, love Brad. most about, honestly, I mean, what I love most about what you said is effectiveness. Yeah. You just nailed it in one word. I mean, you described it and illustrated that, but the effectiveness of it all. Are we working effective? <laughs> How are we working effectively? You nailed it in that in that single statement and rolled it up in a beautiful story. So thank you very much. Question number four. What other successful business owners like yourself, of course, Marisa, should be on the Unlimited Wisdom podcast? Oh, wow. That's a loaded gun question. And there are so many fantastic people that I, I would love for you to bring on. Um, I've looked at your ratio. There are quite a few guys. I'm going to suggest women just because I think they're amazing, kick-ass entrepreneurs. Um, I think that you should invite, and maybe you already did, um, Eliza Delgado. She's fantastic. You've probably heard her on Clubhouse. She's also the CEO of Rich Cardona Media. Um, and my friend, Kareen Mills, who speaks from a mother's heart. She is just amazing. And she does way more than most people think. She knows absolutely everything about um, financing and things behind the scenes. She's an actual certified accountant and she does investing. So those are two people that I would recommend for you. Love it. And I'm friends with both of them. And I, have to <laughs> them, so. I know that's why I said it so that you would like key in. <laughs> Good call. Good call. I will definitely reach out to them right away. So thank you. And thanks for highlighting what they do and everything. I love when people do that. Yep. Not only the names, but they say, hey, here's who you connect with in this space. So I love it. Let's get to some wisdom. What do you think? I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> what would you share with other, what, what piece of wisdom would you share with other business owners? You asked a great question that alluded to it earlier. One, not being a super, the superhero of your business. You don't need to be the superhero of your business, right? To, because you're not maximizing your self-will and your efficiency. I've learned that, number one. And number two, the other thing that a lot of people don't tell you when you, get, when you start a business is we think this is innate. We know this. All that glitters isn't gold. Um, trust yourself. Don't, um, don't think that everybody has your best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. They don't. Um, but that doesn't mean that there aren't good people, right? There are great people to work with, but not everybody that wants to either get in business with you, be a partner or listen to you spew your wisdom to them is somebody that you can innately trust. Um, and that's something that you don't learn until you get here and you have the, oops, I screwed up moment where you go, yeah, that's better you learned the lesson, right? And so I like to try to help other people avoid some of those pitfalls because boy, would it have been nice if I would have just known X, right? Before I did something. Um, and yeah, and also understanding that you are worthy of value, right? You're gonna have to dig in and work really, really hard to prove to people that you can do your job, like that your services are worth what you're charging or that your the value that they will get is good. But you also have to remember that you should be charging people for quality work, especially if you're putting that out. And a lot of starting entrepreneurs just have zero clue about that. So it's so true. It's so <laughs> true. So all three of them, 
Um, can we dive in just a little bit more? So we uh -huh. kind of did to the effectiveness of the entrepreneurs who are trying to figure everything out on their own. And we kind of dove into that a little bit. So nice, well done on that. Um, the second piece or the third piece, can you give someone a little bit, a little bit more advice? Cause I know you have experience in these spaces. <laughs> yep. um, I want to, I want to take it one. Can you take a one notch deeper? What, what kind of advice sure. would you, would you give them on two or three? Sure. For the second one, uh, which one oh, is the value, about... trust and value. Okay, here we go. You're good. So value is it, 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 as a startup entrepreneur, we often think that we have to prove ourselves to everybody else. And you will have to do that, right? Like, so here's the deeper dive into that. You will have to do that. And you will have to, to prove that your services are um, worth whatever it is that you're charging when you start out. But what people don't remember, what people don't realize is there's a fine line between starting and then becoming um, well-versed in subject matter. There's a, there's a thing that a lot of people don't understand is that it only takes 17% more knowledge than somebody else to be more at, like an expert level at something, especially with the, with the stay and age of the digital era. Um, and this is something if you're, I know you're well-versed in advising, consulting and strategists and stuff talk about, because a lot of us think that we have to be a hundred percent knowledgeable in the subjects that we teach train or consult on. And that's not necessarily true. Now, does that say that you should have no knowledge or that you shouldn't be working towards having as much knowledge as you possibly can? No. What's that? What that's saying is that you don't need to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that what you're doing is uh, effective for your client or valuable. Um, and I see, especially women, but I see men doing it too, that just don't charge for services they provide. They provide these services to people free of charge and keep doing it. And then they have these impossible clients. They're hard to please. They cannot please them because they have not set any boundaries for their client to say, look, here's what I'm providing you. I provide you this, this, and this, right? So as long as you tell people, and then, you know, what's the key in business? under promise over deliver, because it always makes you come out on top every time I've done it. I've done the over promising because I thought I needed to keep saying yes, yes. And yes, you don't have to keep saying yes. Right. Your clients need to understand that you have boundaries and that this is what you've set. Right. I have said it costs $5,000 for X event. If you want this thing as well, you have to pay an additional price for that because I am not capable of being Superman or superwoman to do all of these things for you at the same time. Right. So that's one, that's the, that's a deeper dive into uh, making sure that you're charging for value. And then for trust, <laughs> it's a lesson well-learned. Um, there are many people that will see you if you, especially if you're doing well, if you are doing if you have a successful business model and your business is doing well and you are securing clients and you're, and you're rocking and rolling that will come along and act as somebody that either needs your help or want to be a strategic partner. And all they're really doing is picking your brain for all the goodies that you have so that they can then take that model and utilize it for themselves. So you have to be careful. Um, I always say, anymore, it doesn't matter. If you work, whether you're working with a friend, whether you're working with family, whether you're working with uh, your own contractor, put it in writing, get it in a contract, sign it because they can then not take your stuff and utilize it as their own. And there's a strict binding agreement that says a lot of things and make sure that your, your contracts are done legally, that they're bound and, and everybody knows what they mean because people want to do business with people they know and they forget that step. It's a critical step. I, you, and Brian probably knows just as well as I do. There's so many people that forgot to put a contract in place and then didn't realize, oh, hey, this person screwed me over for however much money or a piece of my company or utilized my company model for themselves. And it can either end up bad for them or bad for you. So um, yeah, just remember that not everybody is, is trustworthy, even if you love them, even if you love them, that they're not all trustworthy. So I, I love that you brought that up because this this is a less talked about subject and I know you to be so real. And I love that you have <laughs> yep. in terms of wisdom for business, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's a real topic. So there's a balance between scarcity and abundance, but there's also exactly. the, lega the, the legality and the boundaries. And this is such an important topic. So I love that you spoke into it, not just the price. Hey, go, anybody listening right now, go double your prices. You're probably <laughs> charging... Like you're probably not charging enough in reality yep. when you add up all the expenses and everything we pay for and recurring, you know, charges and all that kind of stuff. You're probably not charging. Enough. So yes, I'm speaking to you. You hear me right now, <laughs> go charge more for your products and services. Um, it's okay to do that. You now have permission from Marisa and I. Yep. <laughs> so you I do. love to that. 
but also, and also, I love that you spoke into the other aspect. And that is like, hey, put some protections in place for yourself too, because there's a ton of people out there. I can't tell you how many, I don't know how many you get, but I know it's a lot of requests of people who really just want to connect. And then they just, they're just taking what you share with them and putting it in place. And we want, we want to love everyone. Mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. That's what we do. We want to love everyone. We got that service heart, right? Yeah. Um, but we got to have protections in place. So yeah. the, the agreements, the contracts, all that kind of stuff, super important. So great, great, great wisdom. Thank you. Thanks. Super important stuff. I so respect you. So I know this might have might or might not have happened, but I have spoken to you for hours about business <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> with you, with you uh -huh. in the same yep. room. So we could talk business forever. I know. Let's shift gears for a moment. I'd love to know what's the most fun vacation you've ever had. Oh my gosh. I loved this question because I thought it was so great. And I, and my answer is still the same. Any vacation that I get to take with all three of my kids and they're having a good time is the most fun vacation because vacations are great. I love traveling, but it is so fun to have to, to experience things from that childlike wonder. Right. When we took my kids to, um, to see the, to see the Bay area, San Francisco and see the golden gate bridge and everything for the first time. I remember my girls were just like wide eyed, even though my older one has seen it before, but my younger one hadn't seen it. Um, and my son was little, but they were just so excited Their Her eyes were like, Oh, this is amazing. You know, just looking around at the golden gate bridge and everything else. And she was like, I want to live here. When I, when I, when I grow up, I want to live here. And I'm thinking, well, it's really expensive, but you can, if you want to do anything you want to. And I was like, I understand though, because you, when you're looking at the, you know, the bay and the Harbor and everything, it's really gorgeous. So I love doing, we love doing all that stuff with them. And it's just so fun. It's like Christmas morning when you go on vacation with, with your kids and they haven't been somewhere because they just get excited about everything. Right. Adults don't get excited about everything I do, but personally speaking, not every adult does. And so it's so fun to be with people that remind you that you can get excited about little things, right? Everything can be exciting. So. I love it. I love it. One of the companies that I used to work with um, was all about play. So in the recreation space, for anybody listening, they likely know that I was in the recreation space for 15 years. And one of the products that we repped was all about play. I love it. So it's great to be playful, especially mm -hmm. as entrepreneurs. You entrepreneur. Yes, I'm speaking to you. Go out and play a little bit. <laughs> Get with the kids or not the kids or the spouse or the whoever it is and go out and do some play today. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Awesome. This has been great. I love that you invested the time to be here, Marisa. I really appreciate your time. What's what's the, when someone watches this or listens to this and they're like, she's got all that energy and events and all this <laughs> stuff and wow, all that wisdom and value. And they want to immediately reach out to you. What's the website or how can they reach out to you to connect? Sure. Um, and my website's going through a relaunch, so I'm super excited. It'll be really great. Um, it's Venus Promotions. So you can see the Venus behind me, like the goddess, venuspromotions.com. And you can also find me on LinkedIn, um, typing in Marisa, M-A-R-I-S-A. -I, I promise you'll probably try to spell it wrong. Brown, find the purple hair and you will see me because if you're listening from the podcast, you won't, you won't be able to see me. If you're watching the video, you will. But if you're listening from the podcast, I have purple hair. It's Marisa Brown. You'll find me on LinkedIn. You'll find me on Instagram. Um, under Venus Promotions, and you'll also find me on um, Facebook under Venus Promotions as well. So, love it, love it. Uh, it's really easy to remember too. <laughs> it's easy. I love yep. the the, the yep. branding side of that. It's it's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> the purple hair and the purple branding really can tie it together for everybody that's listening to the podcast. So, <laughs> nice and easy. That's great. Thank you again. This is Brad A. Milford with the Unlimited Business Wisdom Podcast, where business owners make in five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, thirteen. It doesn't matter. It's not all about the money. It's more about sharing their wisdom and sharing it globally to create impact. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.